1946, the National Research Council of Canada designed and built a flying wing. Creatively called the Tailless Glider, it promised to push local aeronautic research forward into a promising future. The NRC Tailless Glider is part of the history of research into swept wing and flying wing designs that has its roots in England. There in 1910, J.W. Dunn began working on a swept wing biplane called the D-8. One served with a short-lived Canadian Aviation Corps before the whole outfit was retired. This was followed up by the Westland Hill Pterodactyl series in the 1920s designed by Geoffrey Hill. The aircraft found some success, but their progress was interrupted by the breakout of war in 1939. Soviet designers were also working on their own designs. Boris Cherenovsky made a series of powered and unpowered aircraft throughout the late 1920s and 30s. Around the same time, the American effort saw Jack Northrop, Cheston Eshelman, and Charles Friel each coming up with innovative designs. Flying wings were a very promising aerodynamic option, as besides their pleasing aesthetic, they provided the most lift for the least drag. With no parasitic drag inducing fuselage, vertical surfaces or unnecessary wing surfaces, a flying wing is the most efficient design there is, something birds figured out a long time ago. The catch is that they lack longitudinal stability. This is normally corrected by adding a tail surface, a common compromise seen in many tailless designs. Following the Second World War, the Canadian government gained access to captured German research, including their flying wings. Germany had been developing their flying wings since the 1920s, headed by famed aircraft designers like Hugo Junkers, Alexander Lipich, and the Horton brothers. The Horton HO229 in particular pushed the envelope of what was possible, but problems inherent in the design persisted. The Canadian effort began in 1946, when the National Research Council created the Flight Research Laboratory in Arnprior, Ontario. There, the group investigated aircraft stability, control, and performance. They also did some pioneering work on airborne remote sensing for prospecting for metals and radioactive materials. Among their many interests was creating a laminar flow flying wing aircraft, as it seemed like that was the most promising direction for the future of air travel. A British pioneer in this field, Geoffrey Hill, had moved to Canada during the war when he worked as a British scientific liaison officer to the NRC. He had previously created the successful pterodactyl series of flying wings as previously mentioned. After the war, he was contracted to help design a new flying wing for Canada. It would take advantage of all the previous research made into swept wings and laminar flow airfoils. The horribly named NRC tailless glider was built in Ottawa at the National Research Laboratories in 1946. The glider had a wingspan of 14 meters and a weight of 1,700 kilograms. It was crewed by a pilot sitting on the left and an observer co-pilot on the right in bubble canopies. It had retractable landing gear and a pair of landing skids tucked under the wings for emergencies. The center section incorporated a large split flap. The outermost 1.2 meters of the wings were able to pivot 13 degrees. This was done to adjust the lift distribution at the wingtips and provide better longitudinal stability. This was quite the innovation for the time. Directional control was provided by elevons and small rudders at the wingtips. It was made of wood with a smooth epoxy finish. The glider was transported to the RCAF station in Edmonton, Alberta, where it took its first flight later that same year. An RCAF DC-3 towed it to altitudes between 1,800 and 3,000 meters for testing. After proving itself, it was towed 3,700 kilometers to Arnprior, Ontario, making only three stops along the way. At Arnprior, the glider would be stuffed with all kinds of sensors to measure various aspects of its flight. The most dubious instrument on board was a crash sensor beacon that had been developed at the NRC. Luckily, it was never properly tested. The program ended in 1950 and the glider was scrapped to make room for the NRC's other projects. There were many, many other groups working on similar projects around the same time. A few of them were quite notable. The UK's Armstrong Whitworth AW-52 first flew in 1947 and was tested until 1954. 
In Turkey, the THK-13 flew between 1948 and 1950. And in the U.S., Jack Northrop's lifelong obsession with the flying wing produced the exceptional YB-35 and YB-49. All this work and all this progress has so far culminated in only two or three operational aircraft. The first was the Northrop B-2 Stealth Bomber, which took its first flight to 1989 and entered service in 1997. The second was the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 Sentinel, which first flew in 1991. Iran began producing a smaller copy of the Sentinel called the Shahed Sega, starting in 2018, but no reliable details of production numbers are available. The NRC's tailless glider was a neat little project that made a contribution to the history of flying wing aviation. However, today it is almost completely forgotten. Like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and you can always show me some love by joining the growing flight crew of Patreon supporters. <laughs>